Do you like Minecraft or have any interest in how they do their double tap flying mechanic? Stay tuned to find out. Fly, simply double tap the space bar to rise up into the air. All right, so we're going to go and do a very similar thing. You can, of course, use whatever input button that you would like. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go up, I'm going to create my input. And I'm just going to call this fly, add it, and you can add whatever button you want. Um, if you want to keep to Minecraft uh, normal buttons, you can go ahead and space. Of course, your game, your decision, you can use whatever you want. I'll go ahead and hit OK. I'll use the space bar. And we can close out of that. Next, of course, we're going to need a scene of some sort. So this would be probably be your player scene or your game scene. In my case, just to show this off, I'm just going to use a simple UI because the only thing you need to see here is going to be the code and the output. All right, so I'll go ahead and save that. We want to name. I'll add a script onto it, and we are ready to get started. So to do this, we're going to create a few different variables here. Okay, and those and process later. So let's go ahead and start creating variables. I'm going to have one for my game mode that we can track that. So I'll have that set to zero by default. All right. Next, I'm going to use uh, enums. And these are things that we can use for like states or flags. And you, this is essentially the, the start of where you would go into making, say, a state sheet in your code. So to create this, this is called, this is an enum. So we just type enum instead of var. And we give it a name of nodes. And then we just open a pair of curly. And whatever we want goes inside here. So for me, I'm going to set survival, comma, go to the next line, and do block. Now, if you were to print these out, you're just going to get numbers back in return. You're going to get integers. And, of course, the beginning, so survival is going to be equal to zero. So that's why we're setting it to zero. First. And when it gets set to fly, this will be the equivalent of being set to one. Okay, so another way to, uh, or another thing that we're going to need here is we're going to create a variable for our double tap. And this is how much time the user has to press the button twice in order to uh, fly, lift off the ground. Now, for my testing, I feel 0 0.25 is fair, as well as something I feel like I would expect in a game. Of course, you can experiment to see what works best for you. I'm going to create one for the mode timer, and this is going to keep track of whether we're, we're resetting our timer or if the fly portion gets triggered initiated since we are using the same button. And this is a, a similar start that you would see in something like a fighting game for creating combat. So by default, it's going to be as zero. And last but not least, we're going to have a variable called start. That'll start off as false. So start is going to be our trigger as to whether or not our load timer starts accumulating time and begins. And if that is active, of course, so that's accumulating time. And if we hit our double tap button, if we hit our button within that double tap time limit, we'll go into our game mode variable and our enum, and we'll change it from survival to fly. So ho hopefully that makes sense for you guys. So what we're going to do is the first thing I'm going to check here is I'm going to go ahead and create my function for my fly timer. That's going to take in an argument delta that we'll get from the process function. And what we're going to do, we're going to say if start, that's the equivalent of saying if start is equal to true. What we're going to do is we're going to set mode timer plus equals delta. So this is going to constantly add on for timer. 
And if you want to see that, you can go ahead and you can print Melt Diver. What we want to do if start is not, is not true, right? Uh, we're basically going to check, or we don't really need to check if it's not true, not true, this should run. Um, so we're going to say if our mode timer is greater than our double tap. So if it's uh, larger than that, then the time that we set for our user to press the double tap our button, we're going to set start false. And then we're just going to set the mode timer back to zero, zero. And of course, if you want, you can go ahead and print that up there as well. And we're going to create one more function here. My timer. Our next function that we create is going to be uh, fly mode toggle. That needs no arguments. And what we're going to do is we're going to do a we're going to have a long if check here. So in order to split this into multiple lines, we can actually use these uh, parentheses here. So we say input dot is action just released, and we'll do fly, and then we'll just hit enter and go down to the next line. Say and mode timer is less than or equal to double tap. Go on to the next line and start is equal to true. And then we can put our colon after that. And there you go. That's how we would do a multi-line if check. If you want to condense it down to something more readable instead of one super line. So what we, all we need to do here is we'll set start equal to false. Just remember our timer is already going here and we're toggling this. So, uh, if we're basically, if we're double tapping, we're going to set, we're going to turn our timer off. We're going to set our mode timer. I, oh, we have to wait there. I'm going to set that to zero, zero, so we can get that reset. We're going to access our game mode, and here's where you can, why you can set it to one, or if you're using an enum, you can just do bones dot block. And again, if you want, you can go ahead, print out fly. And we have one elif check here. Elif, our input, of course, is actually pressed, or uh, just released, fly button. So if we don't have a timer going on, or we've, we've gone past our double tap, right? So we're either too slow, or we haven't tried to do our double tap yet. We're going to start, set our start equal to true, so our timer can begin. And game mode, be modes dot provide. Um, now something that I should know here is when we reset it here, once we've gone past our double tap, uh, we should go ahead and just make sure our game mode here is also being set to survival, just to make sure we get no weird things going. So if we go ahead and run this now, we're not actually going up to process blind mode toggle. And you can see when we hit our jump button or space, whatever you designated as your fly button, you see the timer there ticks up, and once it reaches the maximum of time, it resets. So you can see in my case, I got a set to 0.25 for my double tap. Once the timer reaches 0.25, it resets back to zero, and you see. Now, if I were to press it twice and get that double tap in, you see we got fly written out there, right there at the bottom, and our timer has stopped. And if we were to hit it again, our timer would restart and do it again. So there you go.
That's all we have to do to trigger a fly. So at this point, uh, whatever you want to put in here, of course, instead of instead of printing fly, uh, whatever you want to have in here for when you double tap, maybe you create a stronger attack, or maybe you do want to have a fly, in which case uh, you need to tweak and change the gravity. But there you go. That's how you would set something like that up. Hopefully that wasn't too confusing. If you have any questions, go ahead and ask them down below. And if you have any ideas for videos or something that uh, you want to see or need help with, go ahead and leave a comment down below.